Have you heard about Sudan? I want to talk about Sudan. Right now, the world needs to shout about Sudan. My friends there are being killed and none of them are armed. The people need support and more. The people need it fast. We might not be directly from Sudan, but we are Sudanese. If their voice is muted, then the noise will come from you and me. Our loyalty is not from any country, it's to human beings. But I'll wave the blue, yellow, green until the truth is seen. Recently, we've seen Sudan on television stations. And in the UK, there's been impressive demonstrations. Now the British public wants to know the situation. And my friends there have asked me to share an explanation. For the past 30 years now, Sudan has suffered violence under a man named Amar al-Bashir. Bashir was the clear definition of a tyrant who only held power using firearms and fear. In the early 2000s, he oversaw war crimes. Most of you have heard about the war in Darfur. That's West Sudan, but it wasn't really war. It's not a war when only one side are using armed force. What it was is genocide. That's what happened. More blood and murder than the people could have fathomed. The death count was said to be around half a million civilians who were raped and murdered by his militants, a group called the Janjaweed. Let me paint the picture just to try and make this clearer. The Janjaweed were hired by Bashiris' militia. The militiamen were led by a man they call Hameti, and Hameti took his orders from Bashir himself directly. And those orders were genocide. Now, 15 years later, and Bashir was still not backing up, Plus food and fuel subsidies received a massive cut. The people tried to rise before, but this time they had enough. They organised peacefully. We saw the masses gather up. They faced violence, but responded with peace. They didn't fight with weapons. They organised a sit-in. More than a million people just sat in the streets. Men, children, elders, women. Eventually, after months, they overthrew Bashir. Their opportunity for a new life was here. Bashir was arrested by the army on his downfall, who formed the Transitional Military Council. The TMC, for short, provides a temporary governance until the people organise themselves to form a government. But the council is led by a man named Burhan, who himself served under al-Bashir's Sudan. And his second in command, I hope you're all ready, is the leader of the Janjaweed, the man they call Hameti. The man who led the killing sprees and genocide so casually. The very same terrorist who killed their friends and family. This is not the revolution everyone had planned to see. The army had replaced Bashir with the actual Janjaweed. Now rebranded as the Rapid Support Forces. Now to me, that's a blatant betrayal. The army was supposed to help the people and they failed. They became the aggressor. But the people kept up pressure. Until they were massacred by their new oppressor. On the June the 3rd, 2019, a day you've all very likely heard about. The River Nile ran with blood and one murder's bad enough, but that day there were just absurd amounts. It was a massacre at dawn. They were attacked while they were sleeping. 500 dead at least because they asked for freedom. Children killed, women bleeding, beatings, rape, murder, screaming. Dead bodies everywhere, more than you can count. Dumped in the river, still being pulled out. Most of the bodies still haven't been found, and I know because I've spoken to people on the ground. The military council don't want a transition. They don't want civilians in government positions. They want to keep the power that they took without permission and murder any person who shows them opposition. Just like Bashir. Now, some of the people listening might be thinking, why should I care about Sudan? I live in Britain. I'm not exactly out there killing with the troops. But actually, you couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, ever wonder how the TMC and Janjaweed can buy their guns? Well, here's a hint. It's because we all supply the funds. The EU, UK, UAE and Saudi. I'll break it down simply if you quickly just allow me. The EU has paid no less than 400 million directly to Sudan and the Janjaweed militants. All because Europe is so anti-immigrant, it pays these terrorists for murder and imprisonment. The Janjaweed are being paid to police the borders. But now it's the EU who released the orders, endorsing terrorists, awarding terrorists with hundreds of millions supporting terrorists. This was an agreement since 2015. It's called the Khartoum process and it really is deep. But Hameti gets support from other powers in the region, Egypt, the UAE and Saudi too, because if people in Sudan do win their own freedom, others in the region will want the same too. But Saudi in particular has another reason for feeding the Janjaweed so many weapons. Saudi continue to fund Hameti's men because it's them who they send to fight for Saudi out in Yemen. Everything seems to be about vested interests, political power, money, greed. And as we've seen, big powers don't share the people's interests because the Sudanese people's interests is peace. But for as long as there is no peace, 
None of us will know sleep. We will sow their seeds of hope. They will grow so deep. There's too many laid to rest. Freedom is a great revenge. We will not betray the dead. Just ask Loki. And so I'll end with a message to Hamedi. You can't speak of peace when there's blood on your machete. You can cut the internet with what you want to telly. Let me tell you, people around the world know your face already. Sudan will have its freedom. The people are too many. From London to Khartoum, you best believe we're ready. You are not the best of us. You cannot suppress our love. When you're put in jail, we'll use your bullets as confetti. Because we might not be directly from Sudan, but we are Sudanese. If their voice is muted, then the noise will come from you and me. Our loyalty is not to any country, it's to human beings. But I'll wave the blue, yellow, green until Sudan is free. Haskud Bas. Freedom and peace in Sudan.